guys, welcome back to Tea Talk with Thai Wing. In this episode, we're gonna talk about traveling. Vietnam has three regions. In the north, we have Hanoi, which is the capital of Vietnam, and then central Vietnam is Hue, and southern Vietnam is Saigon. And I was born in the south of Vietnam. I was born in a small city called Mi Tho, which is below Saigon. Vietnam is small. To travel nowadays with planes and you know a lot more updated, so relatively really quick and fast to travel from south to north. I think for a flight, it's about one hour, two hours. It's not long and it's not far. So I was born on 1980, and 1993, I left Vietnam into America. So between the age of You know, when I was born into the age of 13, we didn't have the means to travel, um, you know, from south to central to north, from Saigon to Hue to Hanoi, and we didn't really have a reason to travel. Now that I'm older and really, really proud of where I come from, and I want to go back and explore Vietnam more. Different areas in Vietnam, different regions in Vietnam, but still, I don't have a lot of time because of the nature of my work and running my own business, I don't have a lot of time. But when I have some free time or it's you know, part of a trip to a work trip, then I will squeeze in you know, a short amount of time to explore. So this time, I'm gonna go to Hue uh, in central Vietnam. But to be honest, not a lot of time. Literally, I have 24 hours to explore Hue. Down by Thai Nguyen. So we flew from Los Angeles to Ho Chi Minh City, but back then it's Saigon. It was like, with the layover and everything, it was about 17-18 hours flight. We got to Ho Chi Minh City, we stayed there a couple days, and then we flew to Hue, and the flight is about one hour. And we got to Hue around noon time, and it was just short, smooth, easy flight. And then obviously that's during lunchtime. And what do you do? You eat. I was lucky enough, we got there and one of my friend's uncle, who's um, a taxi driver, automatically we asked him, was like, can you be our driver for 24 hours? Just take us to all the local places, the local restaurants, uh, a hotel that we're gonna check in, all the local iconic monuments, what Hue has to offer. So literally he is the tour guide of Hue because he's the taxi driver. He knows the ways and he knows the where we can go in 24 hours. Besides eating, sleeping, we want to go to all these places. He was driving and then he came up with the whole schedule for us and I was so happy. The thing about me traveling is that I like spontaneous things. I don't like to plan things and I don't like to, unless it's work, then we have to go by the schedule. I don't want to travel with a group of tourists because then we have to follow their schedule. I don't like to follow the schedule. I like to eat whenever I want to eat and I like to sleep whenever I want to sleep. I don't want to follow by a schedule in order to have fun because to me, that's not fun. That's not exploring. And I like to do the local thing. Sometimes I don't need to do the tourist attraction thing. I just need to do the local thing. I want to feel and be in the moment at that place the most authentic way. He took us to this place called Bada, 
which is like the, supposed to be the local hotspot for all the Hue authentic traditional food. Bánh nằm, bánh bèo, chả cơm, bánh khoái. I think there was a lot. Like we we literally order a full full table of food, and the portion are very small. Like they they comes in like four or five pieces. It's not a lot, so we order a lot just to so we can try everything. And uh, did we finish everything? Not really, but we want to try as much as we can. So that was our lunch at Ba Đỏ restaurant. They call it Wang Ba Đỏ. Hue used to be the kingdom of Vietnam. You know, back in the day when they used to have king, queens, and prince and princess, they all stay in Hue, and they have these plat palaces that um, you know the the royals. Basically, the royals live in these palaces. And if I, I mean, if I could turn back time, I want to go back to that time. I want to be a prince. I want to be one of the royals family, and I want to be. I want to live that life. I want to. I've always fascinated with the whole royal family, and I want to know how it's like. And especially back then, the costume are amazing, and I, I'm all about traditional costume. You will see when we get to go to these. Palaces. No one's living there now, so now they are more like a um, tourist attraction. But we go there because because I, I want to go there because that's what that's what you do when you go to Hue. You visit these places. The amazing architecture that's been built, I think, by hand back in the days, like a long time ago, and they still last until now. And you will see, you will see little clips and you see photos. There's so much land. Back then, all they do is walk. So they walk from one place to another, or um, or they have carriages, I guess. But it's huge. These places are huge. And you get to see the all this engraving by hand on the wall, all the um, artwork. It's it's beautiful and it's amazing. And I'm I was so inspired by this whole trip. So the first place he took us is Lang Min Mang, which is. Uh, one of the king uh, at the time. I'm not so good about history, but this is this 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 episode is not about history. So I'm just telling you where we went, and then maybe you can go back or you can do your own research uh, about these places. And if you have the chance, you should definitely visit these places. So Lang Min Mang, it's my first time in Hue. It's my first time set foot in. The land, the central part of Vietnam, and it used to be where the royals' family living. And then I was like, I feel so royalty, and I feel so. Um, it was very impressive, even though it's old. But there's so much beauty in that old and vintage and antiqueness, especially in uh, in Lang Minh Mang. Is that there's so much land. I don't know how many people used to live there, and like from one place, from one room to the next room, it's like I think they divided by quarters, so it's it's far. It's not close. Like you know, where we used to live now is like what our house average is like two hundred two thousand square feet. They're ten times that, so it's a lot. Wait, I was there, you know, and obviously there's history. There's pe the tourist people. They have the headset with the tour guy, and they tell the history. But I didn't have the time to do that, so I basically just walked around just to see what it's like, just to feel it and smell it, and you know, just to let myself mentally know that I was there. And then if I have the chance and the time, I will go back and I'll explore more in detail. But I was there, and literally, I was there for like. I walk through the whole place really quick, really fast. Take photos, do a short clip, which you'll see in here, in half an hour.
for a day. The driver took us to another place called Lang Kai Den, which is another king uh, at a different time. I love Lang Kai Den. To me personally, I love it because the architecture is. It's. I think this is when he was influenced by the French, and it's a little bit more modernized. And you have to see. The handwork, engraving handwork with this marble, it is beautiful. If I have the chance, I want to have a wall like that in my house or in my showroom because it's really, really like it's really magnificent. The amount of detail that they put onto these walls is ridiculous. It's so good. It's so good, and the colors and. The um, the amount it's it's like you know it's all it's antique it's vintage but yet it's so chic it's so so chic and that is in Lang Kai Den in the front the gate because of the the way they built it with the um, concrete and now it's kind of turned black which I love that because there you should it shows it's it's been through time and how it aged. And it's to me, it's just so beautiful. I hope they'll keep it the way it is, and they won't change or they won't make it newer. But I really appreciate what's been done back then. That was Lang Kai Den, and then we went to another Lang, which is Lang Tự Đức Tự Dụ, um, which is another king. This place is huge. It's bigger than the other two places. I mean, so much land and so many rooms. But there's just that feeling when I 
went to Lang Tử Đức Tử Dũ, I just feel sad. The feeling is not as warmth and is not as lively like the other two. Somehow I went in and I got goosebumps and I feel sad. For, for some reason my in my mind and in my heart, um, I just feel sad for them for at that time. But I don't know about the history. I just know there's something about that place. It just didn't, didn't, I didn't feel happiness in that place. There was like these houses and these rooms and I just feel, it feels cold at Lang Tử Đức and I don't know why, that's just the feeling. All these places they close around five or six so we didn't we can't really go so basically I just give you a brief timeline is that I we landed around noon we ate for, for like an hour until one and we have literally between one to five five thirty to visit these three places because that's what the driver told us and each places it's like about 45 minutes drive we were like running we were running to these um, places but that's what I wanted to do I just want to be there see it with my own eyes and then feel it for that short amount of time and then that does it for me you know that that's enough and then we it's time for us to check in so we check into our hotel it's called the um, Imperial Palace Hotel it, it was very nice and we picked it because it has the old Vietnam and I appreciate the old architecture, the old Vietnam, the old decor, the way they decor, the, um, so we checked in and we got upgraded to a suite and we had this beautiful view. So you can see, we have this beautiful view of Song Hương, which is, they call it the perfume river, which is supposed to be the iconic river in Hue. Song Hương and Song Hương, you have Cao Trang Ting, so Trang Ting's bridge. I'm just giving you all these like iconic places, so maybe you can Google and then you know more about it. But welcome to Imperial Palace. Look at the view. Yeah, a little sweet. This is the bathroom. This is the bedroom. Then we had dinner in uh, in our hotel. Uh, by that time, we let the driver go home because it's kind of late at night, and we don't want to bother him at night. Uh, and then we went to check out the river, Song Hung River, and Gao Trang Ting at night because at night it's really pretty with all the lights, so you can see. And it's a tourist. It's one of the tourist thing to do is you go on this boat. You go on this boat and um, these boats, they have uh, live entertainment. These local singers, they perform for the audience. So you have to pay a fee to be on the boat. That fee is including the boat and watching the performance. But then when you are watching the performance, they recommended you to take pictures. So the photographer, you pay for your pictures. And when you take pictures, you can do these floating lanterns on the river. And they recommend you to give flowers to the performers. And you pay a fee for the flowers. And it's, uh, it's fake roses. It's not real. <laughs> Uh, because they can reuse it and then but they also recommend so you pay a fee to get these roses but then they recommend you to put more money in the roses because the performer get 
the, the money that you put in the rose. They're very creative and clever in terms of like, you know, getting fees, but we didn't, we would, we didn't mind about it. It's, it's not a lot. It's, t it's the tradition that these local singers, they, they sing. Could be like extra income for them. I have to say I feel good that we did that because then at the same time, I appreciate our, our tradition and, and helping the locals. People, these people, they're good. They're not bad. They're good. They sing live. It's, it's also a way of making a living, but then it's, they are passionate about it. You can tell when they sing, they're passionate about it. And we want to help as much as we can, so we, we did everything. We went on the boat, we paid the fee, we took pictures, we paid for the pictures, we paid for the roses, we put money in the roses, and you know, it made us happy. So from the river to the hotel is like five blocks, which is not bad, you know? So we decided to walk back and then on the way back, we saw a dessert place. So we want to have desserts and I want to have tea with fruit and um, it was recommended by, by the cashier and she's like, this is our best seller. And then I got these like fruit tea that's like giant. It's like this big. pineapple tea. Quite a lot. A lot. There's a lot of tea. And fruit. <laughs> and then we also got desserts as well. So that was like a full day of authentic food, seeing these monuments and palace and the traditions and the beauty of Hue in the whole day. And then we went back to the hotel and sleep. We woke up and then there was like, you know, we have the, the breakfast at the hotel. It was like a buffet, traditional Vietnamese food, and we ate a lot. <laughs> uh, and then we met the driver. I think we met him around like 8.30, 9. There's like two more places that we have to see. Grand Palace, the Imperial Grand Palace. And the Ping Mu Pagoda, Jewel Ping Mu. We went to the Grand Palace. It was, it was kind of raining, and then so we had to walk around with the umbrella. It's like just empty, you know. And people go there to learn about the history and admire the um, the beauty of the palace. And I think it's so so nice. And the beauty thing is that I think what the driver told me he's the local there, and so in the palace there are people who consider who, who who get to live in the pa palace so like let's say if you're not in the royal courts but then you have your family members um, like the aunts and the uncles or the relatives of the prince or the princess or the wife um, or the queen or they get to live in the pa in in the palace and people still now still live around the palace and I think some of my friends from Hue their families are in the palace so the palace now turned into a town and people still living there and only a certain part of it and then certain part they, they block off and it's just for tourists locals people that living in the palace which is kind of cool i wanted to check that out but then i didn't have the time to do that because apparently 
the people who are living in the palace now, they have to keep their house. The, uh, um, they cannot change. I mean, they can do updates, but they cannot change the architecture of their house. They have to keep it the most authentic, traditional way. Which I think that's amazing. We're living through history. I wanted to see that, but then we didn't have the time. So maybe next time when I come back, I want to go into the palace and see the people and see how they live and see all these old houses. After the palace, we went to the Ting Mu Pagoda, which is Chua Ting Mu. In pictures, you know, when I was younger, and even until now, in pictures, it, it's like I thought it was gigantic, it's this gigantic, like big pagoda, but it's actually, uh, it's not that big. And I mean, it's high, but it's it's not, but it's beautiful. It's facing the river, and you still have these ladies in their aoyai, traditional. Oh yeah, taking people around uh, the river and to 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 take picture with the um, the po pagoda in the background. When I was there, they block it. You cannot go inside the pagoda. You cannot go up. So behind the pagoda, they have this, you know, the the temple and the court. And you go and you light your incense, and then you see the, um, you know, the surrounding around the pagoda. You know, I was there. I just had to go there, and it was beautiful. It was great. It's exactly like how people describe it in in poems, in stories, in painting. It's 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 there. It just I was expected to be bigger, but it's 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 not. But it's still beautiful. It's still amazing, and I was so happy that I get to see it in person. From there, literally, it was like the time for us to drive, and I think the drive from Hue to Da Nang was like two hours drive. Uh, for those people who are Vietnamese, and if you are the people from Hue, and you have your certain feeling about these places, I would love to know too. Please share with me in the comments. And to me, it's a learning experience. And I didn't get to go. I'm Vietnamese, but I moved to America when I was 13, and now I'm 39, and barely I have just had the chance to visit Central Vietnam, visit Hue. So in the next episode, I will share my trip to Hoi An in 48 hours. Thank you for taking your valuable time to watch my channel. I know there are many, many different choices out there for you to watch. But since you took out your time to watch my channel, and if you want to see more of me, please subscribe to my channel. And again, be sure to stay true to who you are, be yourself, have fun, life is too short, and live for fashion, set the trend. Thank you for watching. See you again in the next clip. Bye.